Vaginal discharge is really common. It can happen at any age, but it's more common after puberty. And it will vary in amount, consistency, color, smell, depending on whereabouts you are in your menstrual cycle. And also depending on whether you are pregnant, ovulating, um, sexually aroused, it changes all the time. But what happens when the color is completely different to what your usual vaginal discharge is, or it's just something that you're not expecting. In this video, we will be talking about the different colors of vaginal discharge. What do they mean? Are they normal? And actually, can you just treat yourself at home and focus on self-care or is it time to just ditch that and go and see your doctor? Hi ladies, I'm Dr. Simi, former surgeon, current GP and cosmetic doctor. Welcome to my channel where we discuss all things skin and women's health. I've already done a video where I talk about the different types of smells that can be associated with vaginal discharge and you can watch that video here. This video though, the main focus is about the colour of the vaginal discharge. So the first colour that I want to focus on is yellow green. Okay, this is not normal. My alarm bells are ringing and I'm thinking to myself, S T I. The STI that characteristically gives a frothy yellow green vaginal discharge is this little guy here. So say hello to Trichomonas vaginalis. This is a microorganism or a parasite that causes the STI that's called trichomoniasis. This is usually caught by having sex without a condom with somebody that is infected with Trichomonas vaginalis. Comment down below if you've never heard of Trichomonas vaginalis because when I mention it to my patients, most of them have never heard of it. They've heard of other STIs, so chlamydia, gonorrhea, genital herpes, but they've never heard of TV, which is really interesting because it's the commonest non-viral STI in the world. More than 270 million cases of Trichomonas vaginalis occurred in 2008, and that was more than the total combined numbers of chlamydia and gonorrhea cases. I'm just gonna let that sink in, 270 million. And the thing that's a little bit worrying about it is the fact that some women don't even know that they've got Trichomonas vaginalis. So, 50% of women that are affected don't have any symptoms. And of course, if you don't have any symptoms and you're having unprotected sex, you don't realize that you are spreading the infection to other people. When symptoms do occur though, they're really characteristic. So as I've mentioned, you get that frothy, yellow, green vaginal discharge. It can smell quite offensive as well. And there can be other symptoms. So for example, burning and stinging when passing urine, soreness around the lips of the vagina and itching around the vagina as well. If you have got these symptoms, you'd need to go and get yourself checked out in sexual health clinic. In the UK, we call these gum clinics, but most countries will have something similar. The good news is that Trichomonas vaginalis is treatable. Treatment for this is actually antibiotics, which both you and your current sexual partner will need to take, as well as your previous partner or partners in the last four weeks. Also, once you've had the antibiotics, you'll need to avoid sex for at least one week whilst you're taking them. The other STI that can give a yellow discharge is gonorrhea. So again, gonorrhea is another sexually transmitted infection that in women can be what we call asymptomatic, i.e. it doesn't give symptoms, so you don't know that you have it. So 50% of women don't have any symptoms if they've got gonorrhea. And this means that it can go untreated for a long time. In the women that do have symptoms though, you can get this yellow vaginal discharge, you can get abdominal pain or pelvic pain. There can be burning and stinging when you're passing urine, intermenstrual bleeding. It can also cause pain during sex. Pain during sex is actually really common, so much so that I've made a video about it for you here and I discuss all the common causes. I also give recommendation and tips for how to improve the condition. The next discharge I want to talk about is red or pink. This can be normal or abnormal. It depends on the circumstances. So for example, if you are having a red or a pink discharge around the time that you're expecting your period, then this could just be completely normal. It means that there is blood around and that's what's causing the red and the pink color of the discharge. You know what I mean, you know, we've all been there. You go to the toilet, you wipe and you look at the tissue and you're like, yep, she's coming and I'm going to be wearing black knickers from tomorrow. Towards the end of the period, a lot of women though find that the discharge becomes more of kind of like a 
dark browny color and this is because the flow of the blood is so slow and the blood is hanging around for much longer in the vagina it's becoming oxidized and this is giving that brown or dark red tinge to the vaginal discharge this is nothing to worry about you don't need any treatment and it usually clears up when your period has completely finished another time when you can get a pink discharge or a red discharge is shortly after sex i'm talking about kind of within the first 24 hours sometimes even within the first 30 minutes this can be due to the fact that during sex there's friction so you can have tiny cuts and scrapes in the vagina which bleed and then cause the vaginal discharge to be like a pinky or tinged color sometimes some women experience a pinky discharge or a red discharge or just frank blood in between their periods so they're not expecting their periods let's say for another few weeks but they're getting a discharge that's looking like their periods about to come so this is called spotting and in medical terms we would call it intermenstrual bleeding so bleeding in between your periods sometimes intermenstrual bleeding is a sign that you need to go and see your doctor so have a look at my video about seven signs that something might be wrong with your period where I give more information about that so there are some circumstances where having a pink or red vaginal discharge starts to ring my alarm bells first example is if you're expecting your period and you've also recently had unprotected sex so I'm talking about sex without a condom and then you get this pink or red vaginal discharge around the time when your period would normally come that is ringing my alarm bells because you could be pregnant so this tinge of pink or red that you're seeing that you think might be the beginning of your period could actually be something called an implantation bleed what happens with that is that your uterus has been preparing itself to have a period so the lining's nice and thick and it's got lots of blood vessels and it's nice and plump and then along comes a fertilized egg and it attaches itself to this nice plump lining and it burrows itself in and this causes tiny amounts of bleeding which you may then see as a pink vaginal discharge and you may think oh okay cool my period's coming soon no, you may not see that period for another nine months or so because you're pregnant. So if this is you, you're in a situation where you're seeing a pink vaginal discharge, it's not your normal period, you're a little bit late for your period and you know you had unprotected sex, the best thing to do is get a pregnancy test so you know whether you're pregnant or not. The second one that rings my alarm bells is if you are already pregnant or in early pregnancy and you start noticing a blood stained or a pink vaginal discharge, this could be a sign of an early miscarriage. So in this situation, you definitely want to seek medical advice urgently. The third example is if you have entered menopause. So if you're a woman who hasn't had a period for like a year or close on a year, and then suddenly you start getting vaginal discharge that's pink or tinged with red, even if it's not frank bleeding, that is a worrying sign because it could be a sign of endometrial cancer. So please Go and see your doctor so that you can have the appropriate tests and have the diagnosis made and have early treatment if necessary. So the next one is cream or white vaginal discharge. If you have a thick, clumpy, white vaginal discharge, this is most likely going to be thrush. A thrush is a yeast infection and it's not that the yeast has suddenly come and infected the vagina. The yeast is resident in the vagina. It normally lives there anyway, but its growth is kind of controlled because there are other bacteria that are competing, good bacteria that also live in the vagina. If there's ever a situation where those competitive bacteria that are living in the vagina are killed off, such as when you have a course of antibiotics, then the yeast are like, it's time to come out and play and they overgrow and this is what's giving that kind of white cottage cheese like discharge actually i'm not sure who was the first person to describe this discharge as looking like cottage cheese but it's a really spot on description so i love it maybe i don't love it <laughs> i'm really sorry if i've put anybody off having cottage cheese for the rest of their life this is not the only type of discharge that you can have with um, thrush. It doesn't always look like cottage cheese. Sometimes it can look like cream or double cream. Oh my God, I'm literally using all of these different food analogies that's probably putting people off food. So again, really sorry if you now no longer want to put cream or double cream on your dessert, but thrush can look like that. Not all women are aware when they have thrush. So some women can have thrush and have no symptoms and that's quite common. So there have been situations where I've had to do a gynecological examination on a patient and I've put the speculum in and I've had a look and I'm like, oh, looks like you've got thrush. 
and the woman's like, oh, I didn't realize that I have thrush because she didn't have any symptoms. If you do get symptoms with thrush, the common ones are vulval itching or burning or stinging. And sometimes the lips of the vagina can actually look red and swollen. It can be uncomfortable to sit down. It can be uncomfortable to have sex. So this is another cause of dyspareunia, painful sex. Sometimes if there's just small amounts of thrush and it's not causing you any symptoms, it doesn't necessarily need to be treated because it can clear up by itself. But there are some situations in which even if you don't have symptoms, if you're found to have thrush, we recommend that you treat it. And one of those conditions is during pregnancy. So we treat thrush with antifungal or anti-yeast medication. And this comes in the forms of tablets, pessaries and creams. A quick note about the tablets and the pessaries. Please take note because this one goes in your mouth and this one goes in the vagina. So you don't want to get those two mixed up. Cream or white vaginal discharge can also be normal, especially if it's not associated with itching or burning or stinging. And if your usual vaginal discharge is cream or white and it doesn't have an offensive smell and they're only small amounts. So it doesn't always mean that you've got thrush if you have a cream or white discharge. The next vaginal discharge we're talking about is gray. Characteristically, this is a common type of discharge that you get if you've got bacterial vaginosis. So bacterial vaginosis is not a sexually transmitted infection. It's classed as a sexually associated infection. And what all that's saying really is that you don't tend to get BV if you've never had sex. And it's not caused by having sex, but it's associated with women that have sex. The main thing that contributes to having BV is a change in the pH of the vagina. So the pH rises, it becomes more alkaline, maybe due to, for example, washing inside the vagina with certain soaps, douching, using perfume products, all of these change the pH of the vagina and cause an overgrowth of a certain type of bacteria, which then gives this gray discharge. It's usually not associated with itching or irritation, although some women can ex experience that as well. The other characteristic thing about this discharge is that it has a fishy smell. Some women also notice that the smell is stronger after they've just had a shower and washed um, down below with soap or after sex. If you have this kind of discharge, please see your doctor because it can be treated. The way that we treat it is with antibiotics, either as tablets, gel, or as a cream. The final color of vaginal discharge that I want to talk about is clear. So this is your normal vaginal discharge and it can have no smell or odor or it can have a slightly acidic smell and it varies in amount and in consistency depending on where you are in your period cycle. If you are ovulating, sexually aroused or breastfeeding you can have more of this kind of discharge. The discharge changes in consistency so at times it's more kind of stringy and stretchy and watery and at other times it thickens up and it can be a little bit kind of snotty or it can be more runny and stringy and a bit more like egg white. This doesn't need any treatment, especially if it's not associated with any itching or burning or irritation of the vulva. Now that we've gone through all the different types of colors that you can get a vaginal discharge, I want to talk to you about what you can do at home to help yourself to reduce your risk of having abnormal vaginal discharge or when to just go and see a doctor. Let's talk about self-care. To reduce your risk of having abnormal vaginal discharge, practice good personal hygiene. So what I mean by that is make sure that you're washing the vulva daily. So wash the outside of the vagina, avoid in douches where you're washing inside the vagina because this changes the pH and can cause you to have BV and the discharge that's associated with BV. Avoid kind of perfumed soaps, bubble baths, vaginal deodorants, femme fresh or feminine wipes. All of these can increase your chance of having that great discharge that's associated with having bacterial vaginosis. Some of these can also predispose you to having thrush. I know for some of you, you're going to be like, I don't need to be told this, but not everybody knows. But when you've gone to the toilet and you've done your pee, wipe from front to back because what you don't want to be doing is transferring all of the bacteria from the anus towards or into the vagina because that can give you an abnormal vaginal discharge. The next tip is practice safe sex. So in the past when I've said this to some women, they've gone, yeah, yeah, I'm practicing safe sex. I've got my contraception, I've got my pill. No, that's not safe sex. That will protect you from pregnancy. I'm talking about protecting yourself from getting an STI. And the only thing that's gonna do that 
is a condom. So as well as your usual pill or implant or whatever contraceptive method you've chosen, you also need to use a condom to prevent STIs such as trichomonas vaginalis. Wear cotton underwear. So sometimes this one seems like a fluffy one, you know, like, oh, wear cotton underwear and everything's gonna be nice and fresh and down there. It, it, it kind of is, but it also kind of isn't because synthetic underwear is more associated with kind of sweating and moisture down there. And that can encourage the growth of um, certain bacteria or yeast to give you thrush. So this is why we recommend wearing cotton underwear. There are some instances when you just need to ditch the self-care and go and see your doctor. So those instances are if you are having bleeding in between your periods regularly, if you're having a bloodstain discharge after menopause, or if you've got unusual vaginal discharge, such as that green yellow discharge that I've mentioned. Other instances are if you have a discharge that's associated with a fever or feeling unwell, um, crampy lower abdominal pain, then you really need to be seeing your doctor so that you can have a proper assessment and a diagnosis of the cause. I hope that you have found that video really informative and please don't be embarrassed. I say this a lot in my videos when I'm talking about women's health because I think that we don't like discussing certain things because we feel that we may be judged. Don't let embarrassment stop you from taking control of your own health and going to see your doctor. For most doctors, there is nothing we haven't seen or heard. Um, so it's quite difficult to embarrass us. And I think you're often more embarrassed um, about having to tell the story of what's happened. If you are having an abnormal vaginal discharge, that is your body's way of telling you that something is up. So go and seek the right help. If you found this video useful, please share it. And of course, comment below. I love reading your comments and I'm happy to answer any questions that you've got.